Welcome along everyone uh, to the first of the GRIP series videos. Um, and I think this is a vastly overlooked area in the golf swing, or in the golf game, should I say. And I wanted to not just make it a generic GRIP lesson, <laughs> where you just, I just start to talk you through the placement of the hands on the golf club. Because that's been done and we still see people overlook the importance of the grip. So I wanted to start us off with just appreciating what the grip or what the job of the grip is. Now, of course, we all know um, that the grip position on the on the club itself aids the orientation of the face. For those of you that don't know, the more your grip is on a weak side, and let's talk about the top hand first, the left hand, the more the left hand is showing few knuckles on the left hand, the more your club face in your backswing is going to cause a fanning opening of the club face on takeaway, or should I say, it's going to help cause. So if you've got any of these issues that I'm about to um, talk about, you might want to stay tuned to why you want to improve your grip. So a weaker left hand, if you did no corrupting of the golf club on the way back, a weaker left hand showing fewer knuckles, and obviously I'm going to talk in right hand speak, in terms of right hand golfer speak, rather than talking about lead hand and trail hand. I'm just gonna talk about left leg, right leg, left hand, right hand, instead of this lead and trail nonsense that's, that's gone on for so long now. So if your top hand uh, on the golf club is showing few knuckles, it will cause your club face in the backswing to roll open, make the club head swing inside too much, it will make your club shaft too laid down in your backswing. It will make you swing more steep on the way down than you went on the way back. It will cause levels of your shoulders to change. It will change the way your pressures work through your feet. You'll tend to shift off the golf ball too much in your backswing. You'll tend to early extend with your back. So the ramifications of having a left hand for a right-handed golfer to be out of position is hundredfold. And what most people like to do is to skip past the grip and go straight on to changing the things that they see in their swing. And even coaches talk about working around the grip. Now I think that's a, that's a whole conversation itself. But I think if you're playing the game and you're not a category one golfer, five handicapper or below, you should be able to change your grip and make a bigger dent in your golf game by doing that than trying to work around your grip. So I would actively encourage people to seriously consider how they're holding the golf club before they start to embark on trying to corrupt the golf club during their swing motion. So that, that's kind of how important this is to me, how you hold the golf club. Now, what's the golf club doing to us at the handle end? Well, it's giving us a sense of what the head is doing. But what tends to happen with golfers is that they push aside what they're trying to do with the handle and they're trying to concentrate on what the head is doing. Now, to understand that, when the handle moves forwards, the club head moves backwards. When the handle moves upwards, the head moves downwards and vice versa. So the point I'm trying to make here is that whatever input you put into the handle, the opposite occurs at the head end. So it's important to understand that if you go about trying to make the head a direct relationship to what you're feeling in the handle, it won't work because they are not working 
the same as each other. They are opposing each other. And I always say this um, rather crazy idea about <laughs> when you're in a car and you're reversing a car with a trailer on it, you'll appreciate that when you turn the wheel of the, of the car to the right, the trailer moves to the left. So when I push the rear of the car towards me, look where the head end is going. And that is very much the same as how my left arm, this is my left arm, this is the golf club. Look what happens to the left arm and the golf club when I'm moving it around. They're moving in opposite directions. So it's really important that you understand the implications of what you feel up at the handle end. If you then throw in a grip that's out of orientation, it will change the orientation of the face, but not only that, it'll change the forces and pressures that you're going to use to guide the head into the golf ball. And what those forces and pressures do, they load the shoulder and they load the top of the chain, top of the kinetic chain of your body. And the interaction from the top of the chain will have a direct response to what you do through your feet. So you need to consider the fact that what your grip is telling the golf club will have an implication on everything. So if you don't get your grip, and I would suggest you consider getting your grip to be an eight or nine out of 10 before you ever move on to anything else, would be such a simple way to improve your golf. Because if you just sat in the living room and just perfected your golf with a golf club in front of you, how much nicer would that be than going out and slogging it out for 100 balls in February on, the, on a cold driving range? So the grip is a massive, or has a massive influence on what the club head is going to do on the golf ball. So that is just the starter for 10 today uh, on what the handle is doing to the head, the implications that this is going to create through the whole uh, system that you're gonna use to make the ball go in a straight line and why it shouldn't be overlooked and why it shouldn't be cast aside. And I, and I help people with their grips. And he said, oh, it just gave me a, a bit of a stronger grip or a bit of a weaker grip or whatever. And I, and I left, but, but that is the groundwork to make all of the systems in the golf swing start to work together and make the game and your swing authentic rather than it being transient in terms of, and what I mean by that is trying to jam the club in a position. When I hear people talk about P1, P2, P3, P4, I'm working on P4. P4 is a position, but the golf swing is a movement. And so I think it's very easy for people to uh, construe that positions are the way you need to train rather than movement. And so I'm all based on movement, how we shift force and weight around the golf ball um, to make the ball go straight. So, not really talked too much about the orientation or position of the club, uh, hands on the club yet, but this is just warming you up with trying to get you to change potentially how, you, how important you consider the grip to be and how important um, the orientation is on the golf club so that we can start to function a little bit more uh, authentically when we swing the golf club. So hopefully that's been insightful and given you something to think about. This grip series is gonna be comprehensive and I hope you enjoy it um, and share it with your friends. If you like the channel or like the video, click the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already and I look forward to seeing you on the tee sometime soon.